Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 137 where you send me your Flat Earth emails to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net Let's get right to it. First one's called Press Inquiry YouTube Material. Dear Mr. Mark Sargent, my name is Anika Zimmerman. I'm working for Dutch Well Germany's international broadcaster. We broadcast worldwide in over 30 languages and would like to use parts of your video, uh, Flat Earth Clues, for our new report on conspiracy theories and why and how they spread on the net. We will also be showing some material from the movie Behind the Curve and would love to complement this by a direct quote of your YouTube material. We broadcast worldwide on TV, DW.com, and our related Facebook and YouTube channels. We would credit your video in any way you wish. Since we start producing this week, a quick reply would be great. Thanks in advance, Anika from Germany. Yep, I replied to her, and sometimes I don't even see this stuff because I just if there if it's another language, I probably wouldn't understand it anyway. I'd have to get a translator. But cool, happy to do it. This one's called Flat Earth License Plate. Good evening, Mark. Flat Geo here. Great job on the film, by the way. Two things. What was the conclusion from the ring laser gyroscope test? And have you ever considered doing a presentation on TED Talks? Hope to hear from you again, your geocentric family, Pascal Vediak. Peace. Uh, yeah, the, the ring laser gyroscope, which I believe was a fiber optic gyroscope, uh, ask Bob from Globusters. He'll tell you uh, how far they've gotten. I mean, the, oh, wow. I'm sorry. That noise you heard was somebody just calling in via Skype. Uh, yeah, if you want to know the details of how that thing has progressed and whatever they're doing, please contact Globusters or Jaron from Globusters or Bob Nodell or any of the Globusters team. They will let you know. Remember, I am the freshman recruiter, and the community has gotten so large that I can't even begin to stay on top of, of what everybody's doing. I do try, but it's it's a losing battle. And yes, please keep calling me, whoever you are. Wow. If he calls one more time, I may have to pause this thing. This one's called New Interactive Map from ISS. Hi, Mark. Here's a link to a news story out of Canada this morning. A student from Nova Scotia has created a new interactive map using photos taken from the ISS. This new map will be available for the public to view sometime this month. Enjoy. Cheers from Canada, or as I like to call it, Canadia, Allison. And let me see here. The news, yeah, uh, it creates interactive world. Uh, NS student creates interactive world map using Chris Hatfield's images from space. Uh-huh. Chris Hatfield, yeah, the Canadian, yeah, no astronauts have ever been there, that's all right. This one's called, What to Do? Mark, I understand your brilliance, but I think you are no more, but just like anyone, because you also, that's some great grammar there, because you also don't provide a solution of what you raise as a problem, comma, some of the facts make sense, but few don't, what does it do? I, obviously, English is not the first language here. What does it do if one start asking questions to the people who you believe they're responsible for this? What is that you get when you break the barrier and get to the place over there? What will it do to the ones who hide it? What use is it? Uh, the truth. Can you put a price on it? The truth will set you free. How's that? More than anything, uh, I know that Franklin Delano Roosevelt said only give the population as much truth as they can handle. Uh, but I think we're willing to handle a lot more now. We're all pretty much on the same page. Social media and six billion smartphones have integrated us all. So I think we're ready for the truth. Don't you think so? That's from Jafta. Yeah, Jafta is not from here. This one's called New Lego Model the Globe. Mark, this was on the Lego. All right, I'm going to have to pause this for a second, guys. Sorry about that. Continuing on. Uh, it was New Lego Model the Globe. This was on the Lego catalog today. That was sent by Steve. And it is a Lego Globe model. 
with a bunch of country flags flying around it. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Cool stuff. Thank you for that. This one's called... Thank you. Hello, Mark. I've been listening and watching you for a while now. Everything you say makes sense. Thank you. Until recently retired, I worked the daily grind and life just flashes by, much too busy to stop and think clearly. Though no one knows these things, we are told and taught about our home, the what and where it is. Well, it just didn't feel right. But I will have certainly thought, who am I, to question those who know better than silly old me? I have spent my life working hard and loving and bringing up my children. They are all grown up now, and I have beautiful grandchildren. I love them all so much. I hope I have the courage to share my thoughts with them and to encourage them to look and question. Again, thank you for the work you do and for reaching so many. That's from Christine. P.S. Please send me the survival guide. Oh, here we go. I can't. I can start to work on something for my chicks. And yes, I was lucky enough. I caught that at the end. Normally, I don't. So again, if you're going to ask for the survival guide, put it put it somewhere in the in the front of the email. That way, I don't miss it until I do the email show. This one's called "See What I've Posted on Google Maps." Hi, Mark. I've been adding photo to Google Maps for just over one year now. Each photo has a comment attached. Most of these are FE related. One photo has had over 185,000 views. And its comment is Google Flat Earth Clues. Awesome. I've now had over 1.6 million views. This number increases daily. If you have the time, click on the link below, then click on the word photos. Tap on any photo see to see the comment. You're doing a great job. Looking forward to meeting you and Patricia at Flat Earth New Zealand soon. Best regards, John Bailey. Thank you, John Bailey. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing you as well down in uh, New Zealand. I'm heading out on Tuesday. That should be a lot of fun. This one's called Finished Flat Earth Model. Hello, Mark. I have a much more complete flat earth model, which is easy to show and reproduce. I can also show how it formed naturally with examples we can see and which we can demonstrate and reproduce. I can easily provide evidence for every aspect of my model. I would love some help getting it published since you were key to my flat earth awakening a few years ago i thought you would like to at least discuss my model and possibly help since i don't have a computer all right uh wait wait a minute you're emailing me uh but i do know how to use a lot of other different software are we doing this on a phone is that what you're doing i have always felt that the current flat earth model was incomplete with many questions left to be answered and for the last few years i've spent the majority of my free time trying to solve the rest of the puzzle if you're interested let me know it's amazing and it shows you a lot more than we would have expected and that's from alex okay uh alex if you're listening to this uh look first i hate cliffhangers and two, if you've got a model and you didn't build it on a computer, but you have a physical version of it, just take a couple snapshots with your camera phone and uh, email them to me when you get a chance. Sh send me some images. Send, send, I, I, I know, realize you don't have a computer, but you emailed me and you know how to run software. So come on, send me, send me some images of this thing. I want to see it. This one's called Some Questions About Flat Earth. Uh, Mark, this is my second attempt. Maybe I'm asking the wrong person according to some posters on YouTube, but your name was in the Netflix doc. So I was thinking, let's ask the expert on this. Okay. And let's see, here we go. Hi, Mark. He sent this March 24th, 2019. Uh, took me a while to find this email address. I don't know how that's even possible and posted the questions on YouTube channel. So here's the copy and paste job. Uh, let's see here. The earth is flat and what we see in heaven above us is just like a giant IMAX screen, a bit like the 3D see-through globe fooling us. We see the universe. Okay, I'm with you. The outside of the flat earth is actually what we see on a globe as South Pole. I have a few questions and it's not just a few, he's got like 10. But, you know, I, I won't, I, I'll just rattle them off. Having a flat earth with an outside perimeter, is there a thickness to the flat earth, of the flat earth known? When we walk to the outside perimeter, where is the edge? Does it touch the IMAX screen or is there a gap? 
can you fall off the flat earth like people said hundreds of years ago? We have the air above the surface. Is that going all the way up to the giant IMAX screen? And what is on the other side of the IMAX screen? Is there a maximum distance between the flat earth surface and the, the, the max screen like a thousand kilometers? How is the universe image being projected to the IMAX screen from the outside or the surface of the inside to the flat earth? Does the flat earth also rotate axis north pole and in a stationary position unlike the round earth globe flying through the universe? Is there anything outside the flat earth and if so, what's there? Had so many questions after seeing it on Netflix. Was thinking someone pulled a huge prank on us. Kind regards, Edward. Well, one thing for sure, it is in Edward's head. Hopefully he will resolve it eventually. Uh, again, do your own research, ask questions, and then rinse and repeat. Do more research. This one's called Flat Earth Billboard. Hey, Mark, how can I get info for putting the research Flat Earth info onto a LED billboard? West Kentucky needs to be woke up. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, yeah. If you're going to do a billboard, it's not hard. Just contact the local billboard provider. I mean, they will sell pretty much anything on a digital billboard. Uh, they'll let you put anything up, yeah, any graphics, as long as it's not profanity, as long as it's not obscene. You can't put porn, obviously, but the rest of it, they'll let you do it. So if you want to do a flat earth billboard, put put the message up there like we did in Oregon and back east in Colorado. Oh, well, we didn't do a digital one in Colorado, but lots of other places. Yeah. This one's called Watch First Images of Black Holes on YouTube. That's from Dre. Thanks, Dre. Yeah, black holes, because you can photograph those. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, nothing suspicious there. That is nothing but a space beat. And you, If you guys have heard my, any of my other stuff, you know what that is. This one's called Confidential. Uh, okay, so this one is confidential. I can't read it. Uh, but it's from Anne. Thank you for that. And I will not read it on air. This one's called, I know this is weird, but could we talk? Dear Mark Sargent, I watch the, I'm reading this as is, the grammar is, I watch the documentary called Beyond the Curve. <laughs> so it's just behind the curve. But actually, you know what beyond the curve is? I hear that actually as much as I do behind the curve now. It's, it's, it rolls off the tongue just as easy. Beyond the curve on Netflix and had to contact you right after. My name is Joshua McCunn, and I have to say I'm biased and believe in a round earth. Yet, I really wanted to talk to you or a flat earther, because I'm not a flat earther, because I have questions and is deeply serious about knowing what you think. I know this is weird coming from, oh, a 17-year-old boy whose parents work at a university and is surrounded by science, thus no one knows about this and no one probably will. But I just really want to talk maybe over Skype or FaceTime and just walk through some ideas. I will say I believe in a round earth. I, you stated that earlier. But deeply just wanted to ha have a civilized conversation with someone not to try to change your views or whatever. But I have questions and ideas. I just want to know and ask and get your opinion if you're okay with that. Please let me know. Thank you, uh, Joshua. You know what? I may have to reach out to him. He's 17 years old. And it's in his head, obviously. I mean, it's it's all over the place. He keeps saying, I'm a round earther. I'm a round earther. But I have questions. But I have questions. It's good. This one's called My Clarity Leads to Confusion. Hello, First to know that I will be 50, May 7th, 2019, and I have a super bad memory problem. <laughs> okay, so if I seem to make one, we'll know this because if they, he repeats that exact statement below, then he does have a super bad memory problem. So if I seem to make no sense, just read it through a few times to even be more confused. While watching the 2015 curvature thing on TV, not sure which one you're talking about there, unless we're talking on TV. Uh, one thing mentioned was a laser gyroscope stuff. He must be talking about the documentary, and actually that's from 2018, although most of it was filmed in 2017, but that's okay. It may be curious about the Large Hadron Collider and the mathematics and engineering behind it, as it would relate to both Flat Earth and Globe Earth as a comparison. That is probably an incomplete thought, but... I sleep very little and usually lay down in silence to rest my body. My brain continues to go at warp speed 
whatever that is. So I have lots of questions I have never heard asked. My son graduates this year, and he also does not believe in the globe thing, which he tends to discuss in school. I'm proud to say that in his yearbook, he is known as the kid that gets the teachers off topic most. He frustrates all his science-based class teachers and will shut them down, but has their respect. I've said for many years, my opinion on mainstream science is it is consistent in the fact that it consistently changes its facts over time. Anyway, thanks, Michael Rodriguez. By the way, I think I'm going to get a vanity plate for our truck that reads, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, it's good. I think that'd be, that'd be an awesome vanity plate. And people would ask you about it, which is even better. This one's called Explicitly Explaining Earth to Newbies. Hey, Mark, first, thanks for spreading the truth and planting the seed. It works. I would like to share with you something I wrote about water and land. I think it's key in every debate. I always get amazing reactions to this. It's a simple concept, but no one has ever explained it in a way that clicks easily. Would you like to see it? Is this your email? <laughs> Cheers, Lex. Uh, Lex, come on, man. No cliffhangers. Uh, if it's not my email, it would have bounced back to you instantly. Uh, would I like to see it? Sure. But so if you're listening to this, send it to me. Don't, don't ask me if I want to see something, just send it to me. What, whatever it is you want me to see. I, I get so many emails and so many phone calls and, and so many other things that I can't, I can't get to everything. Oh, uh, this one's called I am Bark Sergeant. Uh, Mark just made this have fun with it. So thanks for another wonderful secret show. Oh, yeah, super great there. And uh, what he did was he put dog ears and a nose on my face uh, in a shot from the documentary uh, because Bob Nodell from Globusters was trying to come up with a name for his new dog. And so people were suggesting Bark Sergeant. It's funny. Super funny, guys. This one's called Hi. Hey, Mark, thought you might want to share this on your email podcast because I can only imagine that there might be other people out there struggling with the same problem. My best friend, let's call him Jay, is starting to flip-flop on the shape of the world. He's been flat for years, but now he has started to, oh, here we go, started to date a girl. Pay, pay attention, people. This is, this is important. I, I know where this is going. But now he has started to date a girl, let's call her B, and she is really opposed to the ideas of the world being flat. Jay is a vegan and has been for years. I'm pretty sure that B is a vegan too. And I don't think that Jay would date a girl who ate meat. So I was a little confused when he decided to date B who hates the idea of a flat world. Now B is moving in with Jay and Jay has started to say that he doesn't know if he believes in a flat world anymore. I called him out on it, and he has admitted that he just wants to be happy in his life. Basically, he wants the girl. He's going he's gonna to trade flat earth for sex. That's fine. I, I, I get where he's at because he's a man and he's an idiot. And men make horrible decisions for sex all the time. All the time. Uh, my major concern is that by him denying the truth that he has already seen and known for years, he is inevitably going to cause himself to be unhappy by forcing to live in a lie for a girl who will not be cool with dating a boy that continues to believe in a flat world. I fear that this will inevitably lead him to breaking up, her moving out, and then leaving him totally isolated and depressed. What a waste of time and energy. I agree. But you know what? Men have done far, far worse. Of course, the Flat Earth community will always welcome Jay back, but I really wish there was an easier way to save Jay from all this unnecessary heartbreak. I only date girls who are cool with the idea of Flat Earth. Unfortunately, they are few and far between, so I understand that there might be quite a lot of guys who would end up having to swallow this familiar bitter pill in order to get a little nookie. <laughs> what are your thoughts? How to help a, f a fellow truth seeker that is getting blinded by the TNA? Sincerely. Affy. That's not his real name. Uh, okay. Um, there's nothing you can do there. Uh, the, the old saying still applies here, which is some lessons need to be lived. You can't teach them. There's nothing you can do. Kind of like the penny in the light socket thing. You can tell a kid all day long. It's like, don't put a penny in the light socket. Don't put a penny in the light socket. And then one day they, they just do it anyway. And then they get shocked and then they learn. Sorry. There's nothing you can do for him. If he's willing to, he's, he is blinded by the girl uh, and he's going to, he's going to go down this road and yeah, it's going to end badly. 
it could be worse. You know, it's not gonna. He's not gonna end up dead. But sorry, you're just gonna have to let him go through it. But let the tale of J and B be a, a warning to all, if that's possible. Moving on. This one's called Alex Jones. Hi, Mark. This is also Mark from Marysville. On the last Coast to Coast show I listened to with Alex Jones, I was surprised at his statements. Craig, I didn't know that Alex Jones did Coast to Coast a lot. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Mr. Jones say back in the day that Sandy Hook was a false flag? Now he's saying that he had mental problems? I searched the internet but found none of his old shows about Sandy Hook. Also, during the show, he made a crack about Flat Earth. As in, he was not that crazy. I'm beginning to think Mr. Jones is, in fact, not a Russian agent, as some crazy folks have said, but, in fact, just another government shill, like just like Logan Paul. Just saying, keep up the good work. Sincerely, Mark from Marysville. Yeah, uh, Alex Jones has recanted his entire Sandy Hook thing, uh, which, if, if you wonder if that sounds familiar, it's kind of like Joe Rogan, who recanted every bad thing he ever said about uh, NASA. Why have they done this? Are they government agents? No. They, were they compromised? Probably. Yes. Remember, they, they offer you the carrot and the stick, and usually simultaneously, and, and they you have to pick one. And if you don't pick one, there you're going to get the stick. And in Alex's case, he's already been kind of blackballed from social media and mainstream media. His wife has divorced him, and he is not re even really trusted that much by the, the conspiracy world. He's just a character actor. That's all he is. And him going on uh, Logan Paul's show was a last desperate effort, actually, by both of them, because both of both of them are looking for relevancy, and they're having a hard time doing it. Logan Paul's getting older at the, the ripe old age of 24, and his 8th grade demographics will eventually abandon him. Uh, kind of like, you know, because they're going to, everybody gets older. Uh, kind of like Johnny Knoxville and the Jackass team. You know, eventually they had to stop doing it. They got older. Now, uh, Logan Paul still has years to go when it comes to pranks. You know, Johnny Knoxville didn't st stop at so I think he was in his mid-30s at, at the very least. Uh, but the question is, will social media be, you know, still still follow logan i don't know anyway this one's called regarding canada hi mark i'm a youtuber andrew says and i just want to reach out and see if there are any events in the toronto area in the future to please let me know so i can come cover it you seem like a good guy and i'd like to interview you at some point in the future thanks andrew and that's from andrew says tv cool yeah if i ever get back up to the last time i was in toronto was uh, last year in fact just about a year ago where the uh, promo or the uh, the oh, wow I'm pulling a blank here the film festival premiered at the Toronto Film Festival and uh, myself and Patricia Steer went up there so yeah if I get up there for anything else I'd, I'd be happy to do an interview this one's called Israel Moon Landing Not Hi Mark Ha 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 Watching the Failed Landing Live Ha 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 <laughs> Guess they didn't want to try their CGI gar cartoon on everybody yet. And that's from Alex. Yeah, he's absolutely right. Uh, everyone knows. I mean, it just kind of snuck up on people where Israel said, oh, yeah, we're going to land a probe on the moon and on April 11th. And it's like, what, what are you talking about? You, you're going to the moon. You're actually landing a probe. And when you watch the live footage, OK, there were a couple things there. First off was that they didn't even stream it to the major networks or the major networks didn't even want to cover it. Like everyone knew it was going to fail anyway which was, again, odd. And then 20, 20 kilometers, we'll say miles, 20 miles above the surface, they took one single snapshot, one, one single snapshot of the moon and part of the fuselage. No, no video. It's 2019, no video stream at all, even though we were getting uh, full color, uh, well, I don't know if it was color, black and white and sound video in 1969. We we're from the moon, and yet 2019, we're getting nothing. And so he took a single snapshot and then it, nothing, no other images. And then they said, oh yeah, 15 feet before it touched on the ground, they lost control and it crashed and that, and it died instantly. And there was no other images and that was it. And they just kind of walked away from their terminals. I was like, oh, well, sorry. It's like, what? That was it. That's all you got. It was the worst production ever. And the entire time you're watching this thing, you're just looking at a computer animation from the side. They wouldn't even show it, you know, they, they had no video. Again, where was the uh, the full the full motion video? Again, what I've said before is put a 4K camera 
on an object that is going to the moon or farther and you will see the earth turn into a globe behind you you know just point the camera backwards it's all you have to do it's never been done in the history of space travel why not uh let's see here this one's called april 11th israel will land on the moon haha ha, it failed a very well organized show without a shred of surprise on their faces truth fears no investigation regards john yeah yep it's terrible it's absolutely terrible this one's called flat earth cartoon uh hi mark enjoy that's from joe and it's a guy talking it's a father talking to his son and he's got a globe split in half he took it off the the spindle and he goes yes johnny it's true some misguided individuals actually believe the earth is flat but as you can see for yourself the earth is in fact hollow why else would globe companies make them that way yeah that's awesome so thanks for that this one's called effie commercial idea spoof hello mark I had an idea for commercial spoof, but have no skills in video editing for the so or the software for it. Uh, was wondering if you could pass it along to whomever did the Musk fiction, or the I don't know who did that. the 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 Musk fiction video that was initially sent to me oh, at least over a year ago was sent, and I'm, I I do not know who the creator was, or the spoof of they live. Or mention it in Q&A. Uh, the premise for this commercial is to fake the Doritos elephant in the room commercial for the base. Yep, the Doritos elephant. But instead of Doritos, the bag says Flat Earth. And there are little AE map chips in there. I think it would be a real hoot. But as mentioned before, I have no means of realizing it. Best regards, Irene. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, Irene. Didn't even, I did not catch that until I actually read the end of the email. Also, what I think is interesting, Irene, and uh, Patricia Steer mentioned this on her show, Patricia has moments of brilliance, and this one was so obvious it didn't even occur to me. We were talking about Elon Musk, that's what reminded me of this, and the whole SpaceX uh, Tesla in space, right? you know, that profile shot of the red convertible in space with the, with the mannequin. And not only, and I remember saying several times, it's like, okay, why weren't there any logos on the car? There was no SpaceX logo on the car to be seen, and no Tesla logo to be seen even though it was a full-blown tesla roadster why didn't you advertise this and patricia made a good point which was why after it was done because they had so many great shots so many iconic shots in hd why didn't every tesla dealership in the world have massive banners hanging over the cars showing the tesla in space you're, you're talking of a, a incredible advertising campaign incredible marketing opportunity and it never happened. There's no, anyone know, anyone go down to a Tesla dealership and, and if you get a chance and, and ask somebody, it's like, yeah, Tesla in space. So don't you, shouldn't you have like a giant cardboard cut out of this sitting next to the car? Why not? Yeah. Anyway, thank you for that, Irene. This one's called Mark. You should watch this. You called it. Busted. Flat Earth versus Round Earth Explorer by National Geographic. By the way, my kid was asking me about the interview and he is warming up to the idea. I will be gathering his questions and we'll be in touch. I emailed you before from my Gmail under subject nine-year-old wants to wants an interview. This is my personal email. Thanks, Miguel. Uh, yeah, and I'm still waiting. If, you, if your nine-year-old kid wants to interview me, I would be more than happy to do it because as you know, I am all about the children right now. I want to talk to any person under the age of, uh, what's children, under, under the age of 18. I want to talk to them about Flat Earth. I want I want high school, I mean, I've done so many high school interviews, uh, junior high newspapers, so glad that the younger people are getting into this. Very, very happy. This one's called, uh, wait, this is an interview request. Yep. Sorry, uh, interview request, already did that one. This one's called Flat Earth Clues Part 8, The Creative Force. Mark, I saw Behind the Curve on Netflix, and it was more about the movement instead of the content, so I went to your YouTube page and watched the Clues series. I appreciate your tone. It's like you know how people think, reason, what our concerns would be, and you seem to address all of that with care. The creative force video intrigued me because I can see you are referring to a biblical story about the Tower of Babel, but you have more details in there, and I would like to know where you got that information. Wow, you were one of the first people to pick up on that. 
Hmm. I have been in search of the truth for many years now. I started with spiritual books, information from mediums, uh, Sitchin's books, transcripts from an alien that survived the Roswell crash, the Muslim story of Yakub, and now I'm trying to figure out how all this intertwines with Flat Earth. We seem to have visitors to Earth from other universal civilizations. I read a story of how this planet had been seeded from the Pleiades, Orion, and other star systems, but if the stars we see are not suns and planets very far away, is it all a lie? Does the giant star Betelgeuse not exist? Mm. See, I know where he's going, and I, I like where he's headed. I know you probably get a lot of contact from people and cannot answer all of my questions, but if you have resources that can further expand my knowledge, I would appreciate the recommendations. And that's from a guy named Season. Yes, that's my real government name. Oh, I've heard of worse. Season isn't a bad name. All right, moving on. This one's called Real Image Source for the Black Hole Exposed. Hey, Mark. Sean Rose from Greenwood, Indiana here again. Got a new pick I wanted to share with you. I dare you to describe this one, but... I spelled but with two Ts. Even if you don't describe it on air, one thing is for sure. You can't unsee it. Ha, enjoy. Um, yeah, anyone that uses that many instances of the word uh, Y-A... I'm going to throw in a country accent. And the original image from the black hole. Oh, <laughs> oh, he, he, he tied it to Neil deGrasse Tyson's ass. But uh, I am not going to go any further than that. Actually, the, the real image, if you want to look at the black hole photos, was actually a supernova photo, if you even believe that, from 1987, which even that was probably fake. This one is called U2 Plane Spacesuit Challenge. Mark, when I was in the Royal Air Force and on detachment in Cyprus, I had to go to the survival equipment section of the U-2 deployment. They had racks of spacesuits. The guys were very proud of the fact that they worked on them. It was a big deal. Just thought I would share. That's from Rob. Uh, well, technically, they're not spacesuits. They're G-4 suits. They're meant. They're, they're just for pilots. They're tethered. They are not self-contained. If you put one of those suits on, you could not walk into a vacuum chamber and survive. Um, because you have, they have to be tethered <clears throat> to a, uh, to a series of machines, uh, and in a in a plane, they're tethered to the plane. So all the the pumps and all the electronics are tied to the aircraft itself. So if, like the aircraft wasn't on, you know, if it was the engine wasn't fired up, you'd be screwed. Um, so what I'm talking about when I when I talk about the flat Earth clues, the lost nail, and the spacesuit challenge, is a self contained spacesuit, basically the backpack. The impossible backpack that allows astronauts to run around the moon with no no problem at all. This one's called Flat Earth Questions. Dear Mark, my friends and I are avid listeners to your knowledge. With the recent events of the black hole image, we are curious to hear your thoughts on this topic. Also, in many strenuous debates with ignorant globalists, we have heard numerous arm arguments about opposing seasons in different parts of the earth. The arguments are based on the angle at which the sun's rays hit the different areas of the earth. For example, the United States experiences a winter season while uh, Australia experiences a summer season. We would love to hear what you have to say on these topics to strengthen our knowledge of the flat earth. As always, we will continue to ask questions and keep to, up to date on the search for truth till we reach the dome. And that's from Stephen. Uh, yeah, Stephen, just uh, just type in flat earth seasons in YouTube. Uh, look, everything everything's out there now. The internet has got a lot of great algorithms when it comes to finding things. And search engines are way better than they used to be even 15 years ago. So just type in flat earth seasons. You'll see some fantastic diagrams on it. Moving on. This one's called Viva Fry Interview. Mark, <clears throat> excuse me. I just watched the interview between the channel known as Viva Fry and yourself. I thought you were awesome. It was done a few days ago, and it is not on your channel. Hopefully, by the time you get this, it is up on your channel. Thank you for your hard work, Mark. I know you've been doing a ton of interviews later, lately. Hang in there, buddy. We love you, brother. And that's from Donut Viper. Yeah, um, the Viva Fry channel, he's a, he's a lawyer from Montreal, Canada. And he covers a lot of different things. And he contacted me and said, hey, how would you like to talk about this? And he wanted to treat it like I was going up on the stand and he was going to cross-examine me. It's like, you know what? That sounds like a great test to see what, how I would do. Because who knows? Maybe one day I will be up on the stand talking about this or 
in front of a Senate subcommittee or whatever it is, talking to a whole bunch of lawyers. And he, he didn't want to get into the nuts and bolts, and it didn't last very long until he did get into the nuts and bolts. And we went, I think, almost two hours. It was only supposed to be an hour, but as you know, once, once the flat earth gets rolling, uh, it, it, it's really, really difficult to stop. And by the end, I didn't... I, I'm not a huge fan of lawyers anyway. Not against the guy personally. I'm sure he's fine. Uh, but I hate lawyers. And uh, just the profession. I, I just hate it. Because if you want to know why, you heard me say this. Why do you hate lawyers? It's because they don't share any of the penalties for their clients. Uh, I believe that lawyers... I think the entire legal game would be completely different if lawyers would even say, let's do like a like a 1%... Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They would share 1% of the blame. So if you do 100 days in jail, they do a, they do one day in jail for every 100 you do. Or a fine. So like for every um, uh, $100, they get fined a dollar. And you know, that, that can really add up. And, you know, they wouldn't go to normal jail where they, they'd probably go to a minimum security jail. But it, it would make them, I think, think twice about their decisions. And I know this sounds really weird, but uh, and it's just thing I came up with. And one percent may be too low, but it you know, and you probably have to have a maximum. But it would change the game, and uh, that's one of the reasons I hate lawyers so much. Anyway, the point I'm getting at here is that by the time we got to the end, he was strictly going with lawyer tactics, which instead of attacking my points, he was attacking attacking the argument to where he was saying that you've set it up to where flat Earth will be unbeatable. You know, there's nothing I can say to convince you outside of Flat Earth. And I said, that's not exactly true. But yeah, Flat Earth is unbeatable, which is why I just keep spreading the way it is. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> this one's called Interview for Documentary Film. Dear Mr. Sergeant, my name is Francesca. I'm currently studying film at the high school for art and design. I am making a documentary on the Flat Earth and was wondering if there's any way my group and I could interview you about your experiences, findings, and research. We are located in New York City and would be honored if we could interview you over Skype. Let me know and when you'd be interested in answering a few questions. Thanks for your free time, Francesca. And I'm not going to reveal her last name. You guys can try to find that for yourself. But I already did it. In fact, I did it yesterday and it went very well. Great kids. There were four of them and they had wonderful questions. <clears throat> this one's called Apollo astronauts left their poop on the moon. NASA ought to go back for that. That's from Vox. Yep, that was uh, Vox.com story about science how, how the astronauts left uh, all their poop bags on the moon if you believe it again that's just a great space beat story this one's called divided we fall and that was about an interview that i did with divided we fall thank you to joe schumann the guy that set that up this one's called interview Hello, Mr. Sergeant. My name's Alyssa, and I watched the documentary on Netflix a little bit ago. And you guys are wondering why I'm reading this, is because just to get, get, let you know that because of the documentary, I am getting a lot of uh, contact from, from younger people. Uh, my school has asked everyone to do a senior project, and thanks to the documentary, I was hoping to do an article shining some light on conspiracy theories. I was wondering if we could schedule an interview so I can get some information on the Flat Earth Society. If you need some more information before deciding, please ask. Thank you for your time, Alyssa. And she is from John Stark. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, Regional High School in New Hampshire. Cool. Did I write her back? Yes, I did. This one's called... If I can actually get to go, there you are. This one's called, Either Way, It's Not Bad. Mr. Sergeant, I am a college student writing a paper for which I have chosen Flat Earth as my topic. I have read many comments and posts and watched Behind the Curve and many other videos. After everything I have gone over, I have come to the final conclusion that whether the Earth is flat or a globe, the Flat Earth movement has sparked a sense of curiosity and drive for understanding that has not been around for a very long time. Well put. Well put. In that respect, I would like to thank you for the large voice you have provided the movement. With many thanks, Timothy Camplain. Awesome. Thank you for that. That's great. Uh, let me delete that other one because it didn't lead on the main screen. <clears throat> this one's called 
Flat Earth Project for School. Hello, Mark. I hope you're having a good day. I was wondering if you could defend your Flat Earth viewpoint. I am doing a project for school. I'm in the 11th grade and would love to share the news of the Flat Earth, especially knowing that you are a good source for this information. If you could get back to me, that would be awesome. I love your work. Thank you. And that's from uh, uh, an email address called End It With Butter. <laughs> yep, I wrote them back. Cool. This one's called... Uh, Doomcock reacts to the new Star Wars teaser. Yep, that's one for one of my one of my guildmates. Uh, if you didn't already know, uh, the Flat Earth. When I'm when I'm compiling videos, I actually pull up a few video games while I'm waiting for things to render. And if you guys, if anyone's interested, anyone's still playing Warcraft out there? I know it's been around for 14 years, but it just keeps making new content. You can join uh, the Flat Earth Guild. I have a, literally have a Flat Earth Guild. So even when I'm gaming, I am spreading the word. I, my, there's, you know, my name up is above my, my head and then the guild, which is literally called Flat Earth. And so if you want to join, it's on the Stone Mall server. Happy to have you. It's a, it's a wealthy guild. We have a lot of gold and uh, I'm more than happy to share it with you guys. Uh, and that was, sorry, the, that particular email was sent by a guildmate who sent me the uh, trailer for the new Star Wars movie, and I have absolutely given up on Star Wars. I'm sorry, uh, the, the Last Jedi just absolutely broke, broke the franchise in half, broke it over its knee. It's terrible. Anyone that says anything is like, oh, Last Jedi was such a great movie. It's like, really, which part did you love the most? The, uh, the plot holes, the character assassinations, or the universe changes? Because any one of those is could kill a franchise, and they did all three multiple times during the entire thing. It was a, it was a, oh, it's terrible, terrible. Just hyperspace weapons, really hyperspace weapons. That's what you're gonna do after eight movies. You're gonna just introduce that like it's never happened in six thousand years. Okay, uh, this one's called Just Heard Your Interview. Hi, Mark, just heard your interview on AM 1360. Great interview. The first guy you had spoken to sounded like he would be a great subject matter expert. He worked for the military and ran radar systems. Plus, he seemed to seemed to like what he... Plus, he seemed like he wanted to share more about his perspective on things. I would love to hear what he had to say. I just wanted to offer that suggestion, and hopefully you can get him to be a subject matter expert for you. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. That's awesome. This one is called My Truth Channel, Finding Truths TV. Hey, Mark, I have a nothing channel, but put my Biblical Earth new video up and was wondering if you could share. Take it easy, Alex. All right, I'm clicking on it. Did I already thumbs this thing up? No, I didn't. It's a small channel uh, called Finding Truths TV. And Biblical Shape of the Earth, The Firmament. And I just gave it a thumbs up. So there you go. Instant gratification. Well, not exactly instant. It took me a little while to read this thing. Okay, this one's called My Favorite Flat Earth Scriptures. Hey, Mark, been a fan watching your videos since 2017 when I got woke. Thanks for all the hard work. I love researching the science side of things, but also the scriptural side too. I feel there's a lot of substance to what the Bible says on where we live. It's a big piece of the credibility pie, even to those not religious. Everyone respects the authority of the Bible. Hope you enjoy these Bible verses. Share if you like. That's from Tyson Billingsley out of New York City. You know what? Let's get biblical, shall we? There's a couple of verses here. Let's read them off. Proverbs 25.2. It is the glory of God to keep a matter secret, and the glory of kings is to search through the matter. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes... 8.17, when I, then I considered all the work of the true God, and I realized that mankind cannot comprehend what happens under the sun. No matter how hard men try, they cannot comprehend it. Even if they claim that they are wise enough to know, they cannot really comprehend it. It's good. Isaiah 40.22, uh, there is one who dwells above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants <clears throat> excuse me, are like grasshoppers. He is stretching out the heavens like a fine gauze. And he spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Psalms 104.5 He has established the earth on its foundations. It will not be moved from its place forever and ever. And that's also Psalms 96.10 and Psalms 93.1. Ezekiel 1.22 Over the heads of the living creatures was the likeness of an expanse that sparkled like awesome ice stretched out above their heads. 
Revelation 29, and they advanced over the whole earth and encircled the camp of the holy ones and the beloved city. Job 8.14, it is transformed like clay under a seal and its features stand out like those of a garment. 1 Corinthians 15.41, the glory of the sun is one sort and the glory of the moon is the other and the glory of the stars is another. In fact, one star differs from another star in glory. Ecclesiastes 1.5, the sun rises and the sun sets, then it hurries back to the place where it rises again. Mm. Genesis 1, 16 and 17, and God went on to make the two great luminaries, the greater luminary for dominating the day and the lesser luminary for dominating the night and also the stars. Thus God put in the expanse of the heavens to shine upon the earth. Isaiah 66, 1, the heavens are thy throne and the earth is my footstool. Ezekiel 38, 12, there's only three more. Uh, those who are living, <clears throat> sorry, four more, in the center of the earth. Revelation 8, 7, and a third of the earth was turned, oh, sorry, burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up. Isaiah 30, 26, and the light of the full moon will become like the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will become seven times stronger. Wait, when did, when, did, when was that supposed to happen? Because if the sun got seven times brighter, that would be, woof, that'd be rough. Uh, and, and if the moon got uh, like the sun, yeah, there'd be no nighttime, basically. Uh, let's see. In the last one, Joshua ten thirteen. So the sun stood still and the moon did not move until the nation could take vengeance on its enemies. It is not written in the book. Is it not written in the book of Jasher? Well, that's funny because they didn't canonize the book of Jasher. Uh, the sun stood still in the middle of the, middle of the sky and did not hasten to set for about a whole day. Yeah. Good stuff. I like the last one, especially the story of Joshua, which I did not include in the Flat Earth Clues. I did this, the Tower of Babel. This one's called YouTube Content. Hi, Mark. Thank you for your Flat Earth Clues. Awesome. Just a heads up on YouTube in the last month. If you haven't already been a subscriber, I would never have found your content. It seems to be buried in a bunch of Flat Earth Deniers posts. Yours in Christ, Andy Ezel. Yeah, well, there's a lot of content out there anyway. We now have inspired the entire YouTube world. Just about every major channel has done a Flat Earth video at this point. Uh, I mean, every major YouTube channel, every major media network, it, just, just type in Flat Earth and look at the top 50 videos and look at the size of those channels. They're huge. 2015, none of that existed. This one's called In Response to the Guy Saying the Earth Should Be Getting Closer to the Moon. Okay. Uh, hi, Mark. I'm Gregory, a New Zealander living in Tokyo. Uh, you read out on YouTube an email from a guy saying the Earth should be getting closer to the moon because the Earth is moving around the sun. So therefore, when the moon moves on into that path, the Earth should get closer to the moon or even collide with the moon. The problem is that Copernican scientists quote speeds without mentioning that their speed is relative to even though they believe that all speeds are relative. The speed quoted often on the internet for the moon is the speed relative to the earth and the speed quoted for the earth is its speed relative to the sun. So if we take the sun as the standard for all speed measurements, then the speed, he should mention speed a lot more often, right? Uh, of the moon differs from the speed that you'll find often quoted on the internet. Basically, the easy way to understand it is under the pole, under the globe model, not only is the earth attracted by the sun's gravity, the moon is also attracted to the sun, so the earth and moon gravitate towards the sun as a single earth-moon system. And simultaneously, the moon is also orbiting the earth, so if we give a speed of the moon relative to the sun, then that speed is constantly changing. This is like a drinking game every time he says speed. Also note that the speed of the Earth relative to the almighty attractor in the center of the galaxy is also constantly changing, which raises an interesting point since a change in speed is technically an acceleration which should be felt as a force by us here on Earth. Regards, Gregory. Yeah, it's good. About good as explanation as any. This one's called Extremely Grateful to You. Almost a song there. Mark, I am a NASA engineer for 37 years. Your clues videos have transformed my entire life. I could talk for hours about how you have improved almost every aspect of my psyche. I have always considered myself a superb critical thinker, but things did not click until God came back into my life. That is what the most I have you to give my utmost appreciation. I am a thermal engineer with career-long expertise in space simulation, thermal vacuum testing and equipment and controls that could support large thermal vacuum chambers. I work on the East Coast at Goddard Space Flight Center. It's very disconcerting to realize the level of fraud. It's overwhelming 
but I have a close seat to silently observe the deception machine in full force. Most NASA folk are full-fledged atheists. That shouldn't surprise anybody. I was drawn into the fold uh, to my family's dismay as I watched in awe the moon landings. Jaron refuses to talk to me with maybe because my NASA affiliation. I hope to correspond with you until I retire and offer myself as your inside source. My center is filled with Jesuit and Masonic influences. I am convinced that the secret they hold most dear is flat earth. God bless you, sir. You are a rare soul in the world where I do not think I can be myself anymore. I hope you believe me. My interest and my appreciation are very sincere. Your friend, Emil. So I will write him back. I'm going to pause this and write him real quick. This one's called Retired Air Force Navigator. Hello, Mark. I just watched your video where your guest was a retired Air Force Navigator named Thomas. Excellent video. I, too, am a retired Air Force Navigator. I'd like to contact your, deck, your guest. Would you be so kind as to forward my contact info to him, please? I'd like to discuss some flat earth issues from the aviation perspective. Thank, thank you very much. And that's from Greg. Um, that was a while ago. I don't know if I got his contact info still lying around here. I might be able to. If, uh, if Thomas, if you're still listening to the show, uh, please, by all means, uh, send me an email and I will forward it on to Greg. All right. How many more can I do here? This one's called... Oh, yeah, this was the follow-up thing from the Flat Earth Project for School. Okay, he goes, Mark, I just have six pretty simple questions. Take as much time as you need with them. Thank you. And so I wrote him responses to these questions. I won't read you my res responses because you probably already know what I'm going to say. But I'll, here's the six questions he came up with. One, what type of experiments that involve empirical evidence, evidence that you can use your senses for, have you been a part of? Two, what arguments do you use for your go-to support when defending the flat earth? Three, how useful would you say observational evidence has been to your claim? Four, how useful would you say observational evidence has been to your claim? <laughs> He's repeated number four. Uh, five, what sort of barrier do you think surrounds the edge of the earth? And six, what type of future experiments does the community plan on doing in the future you know of to further support the flat earth? Okay. This one's called A Scripture for Your Next Debate of a Christian. It's from Paul. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 and 11. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they believe what is false. Hmm. It's good. This one's called Question About Gravity. Hi, Mark. My name is James. I'm not a flat earther, so so to speak. But I also don't believe in deciding I don't believe something without at least trying to understand it. To that end, I have read some summaries of flat earth belief systems. I understand that different groups don't always agree on everything, but I've found answers to most of my questions about what members of the movement think, with one exception. After watching Behind the Curve, I figured you would be the best person to ask. I'm sure someone has answered this, and I just haven't found it, but here it is. If the phenomena of gravity is caused by a disk, earth, earth accelerating up, oh, here we go. Disk earth accelerating upwards through space at a constant 9.8 meters per second, then what would cause the effect of a person weighing less at high altitude than at sea level? And if that effect is caused by less atmosphere pushing down on them from above, then wouldn't we see the same result simply moving away from the center of the disk? In a dome, there would be a less, a less atmosphere over South Africa than Northern Alaska. So shouldn't people weigh less on a South African beach than atop an Alaskan mountain, whereas opposite seems to be true. I would appreciate some help in finding these answers if you're able. If not, I still thank you for your time, James Morris. Okay, two things. First off, nobody in Flat Earth believes that we're, we're a disc flying through space because no one in Flat Earth believes that there's space uh, flying upwards in 9.8 meters per second squared, sorry. Um, and for me, look, density is only part of it. Yes, there's atmospheric pressure, no question. But I also think there's this magical molecular force called density that's pulling us down because that's what we build in all simulations. So that takes care of just about everything you said, but it's okay. I, I'm not, I'm not mad at the guy. It's just that, you know, that, that first rumor has been spread around for so long that it's like, oh, it's upward. It's flying upwards. Find me, find me someone in flat earth that, that actually made that quote. 
Find me anyone from the speakers group that goes around to conferences. Find me anyone with a sub count of over, I don't know, 5,000 that says this. Find me anyone. Please, trolls. I challenge you. This one's called Spot On Dude. Okay. Waiting. Mark, just wanted to say outstanding performance on the fallen state with the physicist debate. Couldn't have asked for a better scientist to debate with. Friendly, cordial, respectful. You were incredible. Pitched a no-hitter, got a hole-in-one, and any other sports analogy you like. A little too fast at times, but able to rein it in. Yeah, I get excited, and I talk really, really fast. But I'm, remember, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to fire off a whole bunch of information at him, and if you talk slow you run the risk of a pause that they can get in on. If you talk fast enough and you you know you flow, then they, they it's tough for them to get a word in edgewise, as the saying goes. Uh, I would have mentioned Gus Grissom during the part where he questioned why there are no honest, God-fearing astronauts, but hindsight is twenty twenty. Strong work and keep up the good work. Keep it flat, flat Jack. Uh, PSC, if you can get them to let you mirror it on your channel, tell them it'll bring more subscribers. I often subscribe to hosts based on videos that I find on your channel. Um, no, they, they absolutely were, they were proactive about me not putting it on their channel. So they said, okay, you can put the promo. In fact, they, they wrote me and they said, please put the promo on your channel. And as soon as I did, they wrote me again and they said, just so you know, kind of like, okay, the promo's on your channel. That's all you can ever put on there. They were very, very clear about this. And they wrote me back within, I think, an hour after I put it on my channel. And when somebody does that, yeah, you, you do not have any wiggle room. They're very, not only that, but when we were down there, we had Robbie Davidson and Patricia Steer who were about ready to pull out their phones and record it from their side as well because they were with the camera team in that room. And they, they said ahead of time, it's like, you're not filming this. So whatever. There's some people that are really big on exclusive rights. All right, let's see if we can end on a good one. This one's called the vacuum balloon idea for baiting ball earth scientists. Hi, Mark. I've been a listener and fan of yours since early 2015, pretty much day one. A few weeks ago, I was pondering the idea of what it would take to build a rigid balloon that is evacuated of all air or basically a vacuum airship. This, in theory, would surpass the buoyancy of a hydrogen-filled container. This idea is apparently not new. Searching the concept online brings out all the science eggheads and NASA fanboys who attack the idea as ridiculous. They really su readily supply engineering diagrams and physics equations to explain the massive and impractically heavy weight, structurally integrity, and incredible material strength required to... Yeah, you can't do it. I, I'm, not, I'm not siding with them, but you're never going to be able to do it, and here's why. Uh, wait, hang on. Let me finish this. Uh, perhaps this is a perfect opportunity for them to explain how the lunar lem or spacesuits work since the dynamic force equilibrium on the vessel would be exactly the same. Best regards, Lewis, Long Island, New York. Yeah. The problem of trying to do some sort of vacuum airship, uh, look up steel rail car versus vacuum. And that's why. That's a rail car. Uh, when you apply a vacuum on the inside of it, it crushes like a tin can instantly, violently. Uh, there is nothing you can build. You can never build a Zeppelin and try to make a vacuum out of it. The, the, structurally, it wouldn't, you'd never be able to pull it off. All right, let's see. Let's make this the last one. Okay, uh, this one's called... You know what? This is definitely the last one. You are so awesome. That is the, the title. How can, I, how can I top that? Hi, Mark. I just want to chime in and say I love you with or without your hat on. You are very adorable and handsome both ways, just so you know. I am a fairly quiet f ear, but know that I am on your side and there for you in moral support. You are an amazing human being and so incredibly brave doing what you're doing. It is always such a pleasure to listen to every single interview you do and listen to everything you put out there, including your Strange World shows. You are an honorable and decent man, and I call them as I see them. I wish I could stay up late enough to call into Strange World and say hi personally, but I just don't seem to be able to do that, so I have to listen uh, in the very next morning, keep doing what you're doing as you are making a difference in this crazy, crazy, upside down, messed up world. You are the light in this darkness, my friend. The one question I would want to ask you is when Mr. Jerkhead Neil deGrasse Tyson claimed that the earth is an oblate spheroid and pear-shaped, why does no one ask if all the other planets are also pear-shaped and oblate spheroids? 
Globers always refer to how the other planets are round, so how could we be any different? Well, if we were oblate, then are not all the other so-called planets oblate also? What a joke, really. Just wanted to put that out there because it really bothers me. Anyway, I just had to reach out and say hi, but I miss my fellow Flat Earthers, and I'm surrounded by sleepers. Love you, Mark, your friend, Bronca. Cool, and I, I got a chance to meet Bronca several times, and, and she's wonderful. Okay, well, on that note, we're going to end it. Thank you guys for sending all the emails. Remember, you can shoot your stuff to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.